All right, so here I have a response to an academic module task one. The task gives us this description here at the top. The two pie charts show the different show the types of communication used in 1962 and in 1982. Write a report to describe the information shown in the graph. Now you might notice that the wording they use here is different from what you'll see nowadays. That's because this task is from the maybe like the late 1990s. And since, oh, I don't know, I think it's like 2000 or something, like almost 20 years ago, they changed the wording. So you won't see this anymore. Um, but I mean, the concept is still valid. So here we have our two graphs showing the usage in 1962 and the usage in 1982. We got letters, the computer, and the phone. And then here the task is repeated. And if we look at the actual response, you see here the candidate wrote a heading. Of course, nowadays you don't need to do that. And we've got one, two, three, four paragraphs. Looks like the last one is a conclusion. And if I do a word count, it comes to 153 words. So the outline and the word count seem to be okay. But let's have a look and see if the content is okay. Okay, so here I have the same response. I just copied it over into PowerPoint to more clearly show what I'm talking about. All right, so let's look at what they say here. Uh, this is actually the beginning. Uh, this, this is the task. This is the heading. We can ignore that for now. Let's look at the response here. Okay, so the pie chart compared the types of communication used in 1962 and 1982 in percentage, percentage terms. Overall, it's obvious that in 1962, people tended to use letter to communicate, while in 1982, phone dominated other ways of communication. And then, in 1962, letter was the most popular types of communication, accounting for 50%, which was half of all types. The next largest sector was phone, amounting to 35%. Computer occupied the smallest fraction, 15%. 20 years later, in 1982, this completely changed. The percentage of people using phone had risen to 60%. This was an increase of 25% compared with 1962. Much of the increase in phone can be explained by the decrease in the letter, which had dropped from 50% to 10%. There was also, there was also a considerable risen in the proportion of people using compute from 15% to 30 percent in conclusion with the development of technology phones and computers are more widely used all right so here in the beginning the first paragraph contains the introduction and it contains the overview now maybe you're thinking should i write an introduction well yeah you should because if you write an introduction it'll connect your description to an actual real item, the, the, actual, the task that they're giving you. And also, it's going to help you to avoid long noun phrases or time references or other parameters that are given in the, in the description. And then, as for the overview, should you write an overview or not? Well, yeah, for two reasons. One is the band descriptors tell us that you're punished if you do not give an overview. If you do not give an overview, your score for task achievement cannot be higher than a five. And also the actual task tells us that we need to summarize the information by selecting and reporting the main features and make comparisons for relevant. So yes, an overview is necessary. And yes, an introduction is necessary. Now, is this introduction and overview a good one? Um, maybe not. Maybe we should just take a step back and consider what we should do first when we get an academic module task one. All right, so the first thing you need to do is look at the axes. If you don't look at the axes, the X and the Y axis, 
then you're not going to know what the data is actually describing and you are not going to know what noun phrases you're actually dealing with. So let's have a look at those. Okay, so I'm showing you this example from a line graph, but it doesn't really matter what graph you're using. If it's line or whatever, I'm just using line because line is maybe the easiest one to read. Okay, so it says here bankrupt businesses in thousands. So we know that these numbers represent units in thousands. And here we've got the dates. So this is what a potential candidate might write about this graph. They might say the graph shows how the bankrupt businesses changed from 1990 to 2005. But now let's look at the task. The task says bankrupt businesses in thousands. So is this an accurate description of what the task gives us? Does the task say this is how bankrupt businesses change? Or does the task say this is the number of bankrupt businesses? Well, of course, this is the number. It doesn't tell us that how the businesses change. So this is a faulty introduction because that's not what the graph actually shows. And it's the same in this example also. In this example, again, we have these units in thousands and we have the dates. It says population of Briar in thousands. And here is our introduction. It says here is a summary of how the people of Briar varied in the period 1985 to 2000. Now, is this actually true? Does this tell us how the people varied? No, it doesn't. It tells us how the population varied. Population and people are not the same thing. So faulty introduction. So we need to be very careful with the noun phrases. So let's have a look at what this candidate wrote, what noun phrases he or she chose. Okay, so let's look at the noun phrases used in this task. The task says, types of communication used. So letters are a type of communication. Computers are a type of communication. And the phone is a type of communication. Now let's see what the candidate wrote. Uh, okay, so here they refer to types of communication. That's good. And here they say letter, which is okay. Here they say phone is okay because phone is used in reference to other ways. Here letter is used with type, so I guess that's okay. Now here, the next largest sector was phone. Now here is a problem because the phone doesn't uh, constitute part of a sector. It constitutes part of a usage group. And here it just says computer. It doesn't say computer usage or something like that. Here they talk about people, percentage of people using phone. So that's okay. But then here it says much of the increase in phone now see, this is a problem because increase in phone is incorrect. Increasing phone means there are more phones. But remember, it says the types of communication used. So it's quite possible that it's the same number of phones, but people are just using the phones more. So this is a problem because that doesn't actually describe the data that we're seeing. We're not seeing the number of phones in the charts, we're seeing how phones were used. Uh, here they go back to people using compute. I know it should be computer, but let's ignore that for the moment. So in general, it's okay, but I hope you can see that writing increase in phone is gonna be a problem. 
Okay, so if I had to make some corrections to this piece of writing without actually changing the content and rewriting the whole thing, uh, this might be what it would look like. All right, so I've replaced the task with the new format. So it would say summarize the information by selecting and reporting the main features and make comparisons for relevant instead of the original uh, write a report to describe the information shown in the graph because that's like from 20 years ago. We don't need a title, so get, let's get rid of that. All right, so we start off. The pie chart compared. Now, why is this in the past tense? Because when you are writing your response, you are looking at the task. When the examiner is marking your response, they are looking at the task. So both these things are happening in the present. So why use the past tense? So the pie chart compares, not compared. We need a comma here. Now, here they chose to use the word overall to describe the trend. But overall is used when the trend is not 100% consistent. For example, sometimes it rises, sometimes it falls, like in a pie chart, where the line doesn't move consistently up or down then you could say there's an overall trend. But in a, let me move this a little bit, but in a pie chart, oh, I can't move this. But in a pie chart, um, you don't have that problem. You just have a beginning and an ending date. It's not dynamic. So you don't have these fluctuations or variations in between the two time periods. So using overall for a pie chart doesn't really make sense. Okay, then this phrase, it's obvious that that is just unnecessary words added into the response. Very often in the IELTS task one tasks, nothing is obvious. You need to carefully study what's going on. Otherwise, you don't know what to write. So saying things are obvious is not true and it doesn't actually contribute to you getting your message across. So let's leave that out. Now, here we have letter. Now, articles can be difficult for a lot of learners of English to master. Um, here, it should say the letter. Because we're talking about letters in a generic sense. We're not talking about just one specific letter. We're talking about letters in general. So we could have said letters or we could have said the letter but not just letter. And the same is here for phone. So it should be the phone. Now here, other ways of communication. Now here we also need the, because the other ways, let me just see what this refers to. Oh, the phone, all right. Okay, so we're talking about the phone and there are only two other methods of communication. So the nouns that we're talking about are specified so if it's specified, then it should be the other ways of communication. Okay, moving on. I don't know why letter here is capitalized. Okay, but the same thing goes. It should be the letter. What's the most popular? Well, since this is singular, this should also be singular. So the letter was the most popular type of communication. Accounting for 50%. <laughs> Okay, now the 50% part is fine, but why add this? So you are telling the examiner that you know 50% is half. That is just needless repetition. If you are going to repeat yourself, that shows that your response does not show any real progression. So please avoid repetition. We don't need to do this, leave this out. Uh, the next largest sector. Okay, so I think I talked about this before. So sector doesn't match what we see in our task description here. Phone, again, it should be the phone. Here it should be the computer. 20 years later in 1982, again, repetition. We can do the math ourselves. 1982 plus 20 years it's 1982. So if you're going to say 20 years later, then leave this out. If you're going to say 1982, then leave this part out. 
Okay, percentage is misspelled. That might just be an accident. I'm not sure. Phone, I talked about that already. That should be the phone. Um, this looks okay. Now, here. There's actually more wrong with this than just this part here, increase in phone. I talked already about that, that we shouldn't say increase in phone because we don't know if there were more phones. But another problem is this. The nature of task one is not for you to explain trends. You are asked to summarize and report. And of course, make comparisons where relevant. They're not asking you to explain things. If you wish to explain things, do that in task two. That's not in the nature of task one. Now, you could say that the increase in the usage of the phone was accompanied by a decrease in usage of letters. That's okay. Then you are reporting on what you see. Don't try to explain. Uh, then this compute, well, of course, that should be the computer. Now, I put this conclusion in red. Conclusions are not necessary in task one. Okay, so why do I say you don't need a conclusion when so many books and so many people say that you do? Well, for one thing, very often in task one, people end up writing meaningless sentences as though they were writing essays. And secondly, if you've already given an overview, then what's the purpose of concluding? You're just going to say the same thing twice. And if you're repeating yourself, well, maybe you will get a five for coherence and cohesion because there's no progress and you are repeating yourself. So if you don't put your overview in the beginning, then perhaps a conclusion and adding elements of an overview at the end would make sense. But if you have an overview, then don't do that. Don't do that. Task one is an information transfer task. There's no need to conclude anything. I mean, look at this. In conclusion, with the development of technology, phones and computers are more widely used. Uh, well, first of all, this was, what, 1982? So why is this R? Second of all, here he says in 1962, people tended to use the letter to communicate, while in 1982, the phone dominated other ways of communication. Uh, and here he says there was also, oh, wait a second. I forgot about this. <laughs> I never even noticed that. There was also a considerable risen. Why is the participle used here? It should be. There was also a considerable rise since we have an article, we have an adjective. So we need a noun here. There should be rise. But anyway. There was also a considerable reason in the proportion of people using computers. So he's telling us more people use computers. And then here he says more people use computers. And in the beginning, uh, let's see. A lot of people use phones. A lot of people use phones. Does that not sound repetitive? So just get rid of the conclusion because you are not saying anything new. You're just repeating what you said before. I was going to rewrite this uh, to change the grammar a little bit and to put the noun phrases in the proper positions and talk about the grammar that you should be using in your writing. But I think I'll do that in another video. All right. So I hope you found this useful.